In the depths of the universe, aliens inhabit a slowly declining planet. Some fear their existence, while others welcome them with open arms. However, these aliens may be less distant than first perceived by the naked eye. Whoa! Hey, I'm trying to work here. Well, since you're here, let me explain to you what I'm trying to do. Let's talk about aliens. No, not the gray big-headed ones that inhabit TV shows and movies. I'm talking about the ones that probably live right across your street. Your friendly neighborhood immigrants. There has always been immigration in the good old US. There was even a naturalization act passed in 1790, a year after the inauguration of George Washington, amply named the Naturalization Act. Even though it was only limited to free white men with good morals who had lived in the US for two years or more. Future amendments to the law extended that time to five years, and then 14. Also, the Reconstructed Amendment allowed anyone to become a U.S. citizen. Boiled down, the 14th and 15th Amendments state that all U.S. citizens will have full rights granted to them, regardless of their race or previous servitude. The 14th Amendment also defines what a citizen is, because for some reason, no one had already done so. The two amendments were also designed to ensure equality on former slaves, but now service protection for immigrants and all minorities. In the USA, we see it shifting between welcoming and restrictive. And it's not just on what the people in the country decide. It's also a reaction to what's going on outside the country. And right now, with our current events, we are seeing it be more restrictive. So, I mean, if we were to brainstorm a couple events, what's one of the first things that comes to mind in world events that would change immigration patterns? 9-11 uh, happening in 2001 our relationship with the Middle East and what's been going on in the Middle East, it did not start with our current president or the last one before that or the last one before that. So the USA is reacting to world events while also trying to keep an identity. So right now it is restrictive. Despite that, many different ethnicities have been despised throughout American history. In the modern USA, we've even got... He's a Mexican. We're building a wall between here and Mexico. Well, I want to, I'm building a wall, okay? Latin Americans. Some people actually do have a point. According to Howard Foster of the National Interest, immigration is bad for the economy. We have a million legal immigrants per year, and the vast majority of them enter the labor market competing with Americans for scarce job opportunities. The result is wage depression, though there are other factors that restrict wage growth, and persistently high unemployment above the 5% level that most economists believe is unhealthy. Back in 1930, it caused President Herbert Hoover to initiate the Mexican Repatriation Act in which people even suspected of being Mexican were stopped on the streets and asked to show their papers. Over one million people of Mexican descent, some that were U.S. citizens, were forcefully deported to Mexico, many having never stepped to foot in the country before. I urge the strengthening of our deportation laws so as to more formally rid ourselves of criminal aliens. Even today, the subject of illegal immigration is an often discussed topic among the political community. Should those nearly two million people here illegally in this country be eligible for United States citizenship? My best judgment um, that I've expressed over the years that someone who enters the country unlawfully, if they're given some sort of legal status, a normal legal status should not get everything that would flow to people who properly wait their time and enter lawfully. So I've not taken a position that, uh, that would support uh, citizenship uh, for those who've entered illegally. Those who made it into the country successfully sought to find a purpose within their new habitude. One of the methods which gains the interest of many new immigrants is the involvement in gang-related activities. One such gang, which catches the attention of people worldwide, is the infamous MS-13. Let's go a little more in-depth. MS-13, formerly known as Mara Salatrucha, is a violent street gang that has 
uh, become notorious on the streets of uh, the West Coast and the East Coast of the United States, but which originated in the countries of Central America, primarily El Salvador, but also Guatemala and Honduras. Most of their crimes tend to be state and local criminal infractions, such as prostitution, sex trafficking, drug distribution, but not drug trafficking across the borders from Mexico. They still can act as enforcers and uh, basically uh, subcontractors to uh, Mexican cartels, but they are being very disorganized and decentralized. Uh, it's very hard for law enforcement to target them in a way that they have targeted traditionally uh, organized crime uh, entities such as the Italians, the mafia, so to speak, and the Mexican cartels. Even though many people have a negative image about immigration implanted in their heads, there are some that believe immigration's pros outweigh their cons. For example, economist Pia Orenius argues that immigrants grease the wheels of the labor market by flowing into industries in areas where there is a relative need for workers, where bottlenecks or shortages might otherwise damp growth. Orenius knows that there are downsides to the prospects of immigration. However, she believes that the fact that it has some cost is not a reason to bar it, but rather manage it. Overall, immigrants deserve more respect for how far they've come to get to the United States. They should be encouraged to do greater things and not shun from society, whether they reside within the bounds of legality or not. Everyone has the opportunity to become an American, after all. As George Washington said, Liberty, when it begins to take root, is just a plan of rapid growth.